Good evening, good morning, good day, good night. Well, maybe not good night. I think I forgot to turn on some of the lights, so give me a moment. Okay, that's the first moment. Nobody watches the first five minutes of the stream, so why not? Let's use this time to turn off, to turn on everything in my in my studio, which is not really a studio because it's also my regular workplace and also our bedroom. <laughs> but that's just the reality. Good evening, one more time. I'm Pablo Spechalski. This is the FPV University, and we're gonna spend together the next one, at least one hour, most probably even up to two hours, talking about stuff. And I have a relatively long list of stuff I would like to talk about prepared uh, because the last stream uh, happened more or less one month ago when we released the first release candidate for the INAV7. Now one month later we have INAV7 already live and kicking since Wednesday. Uh, so far so good. We do not have any reports of any major problems on the release. Of course everything depends how it's gonna work later. But so far everything looks good and uh, you might uh, you might be wondering what's gonna happen next with INAV. We're gonna talk about this thing uh, also during the next, uh, probably quite soon, because the future of INAV looks kind of interesting. We're also going to talk a little about the walk snail, we're going to talk about the DJI, we're going to talk about the ESCs, about we, uh, ESC software, but it won't be about BL Heli or AM32, because we're going to talk about the Escape 32, interesting stuff. I will show you the new drone I've built, it's a cutie, you can see uh, elements of this drone uh, over here. We gonna talk about the LRS and Radio Master, and we also gonna talk about the Beta Flight, because uh, Beta Flight is slowly coming to the next release. For them, it will be Beta Flight 4.5. They want to release the first release candidate like very, very, very soon, and uh, they are working on the few things that were previously not really present in Beta Flight. So uh, definitely, we're gonna talk for a minute or two about that. I'm slightly well not sick, but I'm not really feeling uh, hundred percent because the youngest kid uh, brought something from school. No idea what is it. It's a virus. Uh, maybe it's even COVID. Who knows? Uh, I was kind of feeling under the weather the, basically the whole week. Uh, the wife is right now uh, sick downstairs uh, under the blanket watching TV. Not having any any for any any strength to do basically anything. So so it's me and the kids. And now I have two hours to talk to you because, like I mentioned before, uh, there is a lot of things we can talk about. So. Let's begin with INAF7. Who tried INAF7 already? Let's make a very short... Uh, hmm... Interesting. Looks like the YouTube changed slightly the... YouTube apparently changed slightly the user interface on the, on the stream. Uh, I'm not really streaming that often recently, so I have no idea that they changed something. So, have you used the INF7 already? What do you think? Uh, what do you think about the most uh, important features and the most important changes that uh, we brought to the table? I'm talking about the VTOL support. Yes, I know the VTOL support is probably one of the biggest uh, topics over here. Uh, but let's be honest, the VTOL uh, is kind of biggish topic and most probably we won't be really talking about the, how to set up VTOL today. Mostly because I have not done it yet. Uh, I had no time, I had no vitals uh, to do so. But we introduced quite a lot of uh, different useful features. Like, for example, new assignments for the outputs. Mm, I know that you're, if you are just flying with airplanes or, uh, for example, just flying with uh, quadcopters, it's not really a big deal. But if you have something more interesting uh, in the works, then uh, this is kind of kind of cool feature. Something is making a clicking sound around me, and I have no idea what is it, and it's irritating me. No idea what was making the clicking sound. Anyhow, 
Anyhow, that's that. And of course, uh, we introduce the easy tune, the simplified version of the tuning. So you do not really have to go into the full blown PID tuning to have your quadcopter, because for now, this is only for the multi rotor drums. Uh, so quads, hexas, octas, uh, and so on, uh, without uh, having to go into the PID tuning details, everything with eight sliders, you move things uh, left and right, and you are basically ready to go. So, uh, 65% of the of the viewers uh, said that no, they have not used the INF7 yet. But why? What's stopping you? Guys, this is live for uh, more or less one month. So I think uh, it's really time to go. And uh, the migration from INF6 is relatively simple. There were not that many of the changes in the, in the configuration. Majority of the new stuff are really like the new stuff and they are not really that much. Uh, interacting with the existing tunes. So if you have a tune, just copy paste uh, CLI and you should be golden uh, because it's winter. <laughs> and since when the winter was stopping anyone? Yeah, it's stopping me, for example. I'm, I'm really like, I would like to go flying, but we have right now like 10 centimeters of snow. It's super wet, super muddy and the, the it's, it's slowly melting and the weather is absolutely horrific in terms of the flying. But but that was that, and uh, like I said, so far so good, INF7 looks kinda good. Mm, I'm just checking the... I'm just checking the list of issues reported for the INF7. There is nothing new. Everything what was to be to be released is already released. We have nothing, no new uh, elements. Yes, I know there are some minor problems with the INF Configurator 7. So most probably we will have to make the uh, patch release for the INF Configurator 7. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> that was kind of interesting. Like. Two hours before the release, I wanted to flash uh, INF7. I tried to apply the uh, configurator defaults, and I, then I realized that this thing is broken. <laughs> It's not applying the uh, mixer presets. It's not uh, the alloc is not closing at the end of the process. Uh, so I had to basically fix the INF configurator um, just before the release. Uh, I think I did it correctly, but there might be still some cases when uh, it's not really uh, populating all the settings correctly and not restarting correctly. So so most probably the updated release is uh, in place, uh, but that will be a patch release. So you just flash, you just download the INF configurator unpack the INF configurator 7, uh, 7 7.0.1 and you are done. No really need to do anything uh, super fancy or super important. So good. Let's see what we have in the in the chat. Uh, maybe we have any some any questions that uh, we can start answering. Uh, congratulations, uh, says Sam. Thank you very much. One more time. Przemysław Tritz, uh, czołem. Uh, Sully got a Pico to fly yesterday in INF7. He would like to add leader, but not Uwards left. Yeah, <laughs> that's the problem that uh, if you really want to have a full-blown uh, build, uh, then you have at least how many serial ports? Five? Six? Because you need the... Uh, it's a good practice to leave the serial port one uh, not connected, uh, because in case of the troubles, uh, this can be used to flash without the v v v v VCP connection. So, word one. Then you need the RX, you need the GPS, you need the digital FPV, uh, you need what else? Uh, ESC telemetry, so we are at five serial ports, and if you want to add like uh, the lidar or anything else you are at six so maybe even seven is the better number and unfortunately that means if you really have to want to have the full-blown quad or airplane with everything uh h7 probably the h7 is the best uh, best way to go f 7 s most probably will not have enough of the serial ports. F405s, eh, you might uh, you might hit the quota, you might not hit the quota. So H7s and H7s are well not cheap. But have you noticed that recently the prices of the flight controllers are at least at least stabilizing? Uh, they are not growing. Yes, if you even now if you want to buy the full blown H7, you kind of have to pay around 90, maybe 80, uh, 80 bucks. Not cheap. Uh, but if you want to go with the F405 uh, from SpeedyB, that's like how much? 35 bucks? Looks like we uh, we have uh, relatively cheap or at least affordable flight controllers again on the market. Um, nobody knows uh, how SpeedyB is doing this with their um, prices. 
Nobody knows why the SPDB flight controllers and ESCs are that cheap. Uh, just a few days ago, I was chatting with uh, one of the uh, companies, a kind of big company in terms of the RC and FPV. They make a lot of flight controllers. They sell quite a lot of stuff. And they were also puzzled. How is it possible for the SPDB to be able to sell their flight controllers and ESCs that cheap? Uh, probably they got their hands uh, on the relatively cheap batch of the hardware. Uh, maybe they just uh, are going with the uh, with the scale because the more you manufacture, the cheaper the manufacturing, and most probably also the margin on the SPDB. Just they have just have lower margins than everyone else. And competing with the prices from the SPDB, from what I know, from what I spoke to different uh, different companies, at least at least two, so I can say companies, uh, and arbitrable. Nobody has no idea how to really compete with SPDB, and still deliver uh, good quality flight controllers. So they have a secret, no idea what their secret is. That's, uh, that's the thing. But, uh, but things are changing. Uh, we have, oh, this is also interesting. Uh, I'm not sure if you realized, but I'm not sure if you realize, but more and more companies are going into the 8032 flight controllers. Yes, 8032, which is the cheaper alternative to the STM32, which happened like two years ago, on the a year ago in terms of the flight controllers, uh, because the lack of the STM32s on the market, then uh, the first 8032 flight controllers appeared. They were rather a niche thing, uh, because Neutron RC was doing them, and that's basically all. Now, now, even the iFlight is manufacturing flight controllers based on the 8032. I somewhere, not over here, but somewhere in my in my closet, I have two examples of the 8032 FCs uh, from iFlight. Uh, one in 35, 30 by 30 millimeters, 120 by 20 millimeters, and looks like everything is there. Everything is uh, operational. So uh, STM32 is not really the only option. If you want to, you can go with the 8032, but you have to want to. So that's that. SpeedyB stuff. SpeedyB. Uh, SpeedyB is the interesting case because uh, SpeedyB. To think about it, they are not really. Hmm, they do a very pretty hardware. Uh, they have this uh, Bluetooth connectivity, and this, this is why also people love them. Uh, but the, you have to admit, they do a pretty hardware. Uh, not always the perfect hardware, because if we go to the SPDB F405 V3 with the problems they have, they, this is far from perfect, not operational, at least now. But people love those, this hardware, partially because it's really very pretty. Um, I will not look uh, for any SPDB, uh, but if you compare this, for example, with the flight controllers from, I don't know, Foxeer or the uh, Holybro, you will quickly see that, well, one is prettier than the other. If uh, everything else is uh, exactly the same, which one will you choose? The prettier or the less pretty one? Mm, probably the prettier one, because, uh, because right now, Cool Cat is here, nobody panic. Nobody panic, Cool Cat is here. Uh, hello. So, uh, Jester loves uh, VTOL. Uh, BOAC Tech uh, says that uh, winter is here, nobody is flying. I really honestly wanted to fly to today. Uh, my plan was, if the weather will not be trashy, I will just charge a few lipos, go and fly and have fun. But I woke up... Fog. <laughs> Not only snow, not only cold, L plus three, so it's not really that bad, uh, but fog. And uh, I don't want to fly in the fog because it's kind of kills uh, part of the of the fun. Mm, so that's that. So we were talking about the the SPDB and uh, and that uh, yeah, flight controllers AT thirty two. Why not? It's also. Uh, uh, Mm, yeah, my my colors are not really that much on the SPDB related. Uh, my worst is uh, hertz, so I have to have it like compressed, so that hurts less. And I'm kind of slightly, I'm slightly under the weather, like I mentioned in the beginning of the stream. Uh, the half of the uh, of the of the family is sick right now, so like to keep my throat warmer, so I can speak to you for like two hours or so. This is why. 
And by the way, this is my running gear. Not really that I like because it's high visibility. <laughs> Um, go goal. Uh, how to check VTX? Can I do it on beta flight somehow? Mm, what do you mean check VTX? If it's transmitting? No, you cannot do it with beta flight because uh, this is pure hardware. The beta flight will have no idea if your VTX is transmitting or not transmitting. So using the receiver and checking if it works, this is the only basically way to check if the flight, con sorry, if the VTX, analog, digital, whatever is, is really working because even if the even if the VTX thinks that uh, well it's working, it doesn't mean that it's really working because there's the logic that drives everything, changes channel and sets the uh, video transmission, the radio section. The radio section is not reporting anyhow to the electronics and then to the flight controller that I'm working and transmitting with this and this power. It's just not there. So um, if the age, if the radio section is, is smoked, then it's just not transmitting and nobody knows that uh, it's really happening. Um, Sam says that I should make my own INAV FC, that would be cool. I'm not going into manufacturing. I will not be manufacturing hardware because, well, not. Um, however, uh, however, the idea of um, teaming up with someone to let's say have a branded uh, flight controllers from time to time uh, is somewhere in my mind uh, on the other hand mm, this week i was speaking uh, with one of the companies kind of i will not tell the name because it doesn't make sense about their series of the flight controllers and that maybe it's time to update their portfolio because comparing to the competition they this is the, this is the good hardware but has some problems uh, like for example not enough uh, this type of the outputs not enough uh, five volt pads uh, soldering is kind of complicated and so on and so on and so on and we were chatting for, for some time on how to improve their hardware. Uh, this, of course, will not be branded with my name, but if I will be able to convince them that uh, the changes I, I propose to their hardware, which is good hardware, but only making this hardware slightly more user-friendly would make such a big change. Think about this. Think about what are currently the two, I think, the most two popular flight controller manufacturers. Uh, one would be, of course, Matek. Matek is probably the most popular flight controller manufacturer in INAF world. Uh, they are like the first one with majority of their designs. And the second one is most probably SPDB. The SPDB with their series of F405s and F722s is extremely popular because they are cheap. And if you compare the flight controllers from Matek and flight controllers from SpeedyB with everything else on the market, you will notice that they stand out in the few aspects. And uh, aspect number one, they are. If you see a flight controller from Matek or flight controller from SpeedyB, you see that this is a flight controller from Matek or the SpeedyB because of their distinctive colors. Matek with this uh, light blue and white and the SpeedyB with the black and yellow. You just see this thing. Oh, yeah, it's SpeedyB. Oh, it's Matek. So you, so you see, recognizable. Uh, this kind of maps nicely, for example, to the Mercedes cars. You see... Uh, Mercedes car even without seeing a logo of the Mercedes and you see oh this is Mercedes because this is like every every next model has the very similar traits and you do not have to see the logo or the name to know that okay it's Mercedes the same basically happens with both Matek and the SpeedyB you see the, their flight controllers oh this is Matek this is SpeedyB everybody else uh, is well the generic flight controllers yes there were attempts I think hackers uh, was is making flight controllers in the red uh, the uh, rush uh, makes some uh, plastic casing uh so so that's that but majority of other flight controllers just make generic flight controllers on the brown or gray uh, pcb and they are like they look like any other but they they are different they are recognizable and the second trait that i think is very characteristic to both matek and the spdb is that their flight controllers are user friendly what I mean by that? Um, gyro is the same everywhere. Uh, power section the same basically everywhere. Like 
There are no huge differences between the flight controllers. Uh, however, both Matic and SPDB make the process quite easy for everyone because there is usually a good instruction manual, good listing of what goes where, plus the layout of the paths on the, on the hardware makes sense. Um, if, for example, you want to connect the GPS and receiver to the paths that are also powered from the USB, it's there. You do not have to look. You have plenty of those uh, of those connectors, and this is not a problem. If you look at the flight controllers of different manufacturers, uh, very often there is maybe one part with the plus five volt power from the ESC, maybe zero. You really have to search. But those two manufacturers not only have a nice, pretty, uh, pretty layout, pretty, pretty flight controllers, they also kind of go with this uh, being user-friendly in terms of the features that are for the pilots, so that the pilots do not have to worry too much uh, building their stack, which is a good thing. So, so think about that. Uh, it's not really that hard to make a flight controller that will be competition for those two. Of course, if you can go with the price relatively low, and that's... Uh, and that's always so, always a problem. Slash seven FPV. Hello, man. How's weather in Germany? Well, the same weather as here. <laughs> um, Osbay, will there be a master slider in Easy Tune? So when you get all the pits correct, just move the master slider to have them in proportions, uh, like in Beta Flight. Um, there's a difference uh, because uh, if you have the PID's proportions, on the other hand, maybe. You, hmm. But I think Betaflight recently gave up of the master slider. Uh, the, you do no longer set up the uh, difference, uh, the ratio between P and D, and then move the master slider. I, I, if I remember correctly, there were changes on their approach to doing stuff, so so maybe that. But no, for the next year, there will be no major changes for the easy tune because you would like to see how this thing uh, is working, how people are reacting to the the changes on the easy tune, and then we will make be uh, make uh, decisions. Uh, SpeedDB has a lot of connectors on the wing section. Yes, absolutely. That's absolutely true. Uh, BOAC Tech. Uh, will telemetry via crossfire to LRS work correctly in INF7? Yes, telemetry is working. Uh, there is no MSP yet. There is no yet MSP over uh, crossfire, but this thing is also coming, so uh, so it should be no problem. So that's that. Um, let me quickly go through the through the chat. Uh, okay. Do we have? Do, 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 do. Okay. So so that's that. Now. Here's the next topic I would like to cover, and the next, and the topic is called inaf 7 and what's after inaf 7 Good question, because you might expect that in the next three months uh, we will see another release of from the INAF. We already have quite a lot of features that are ready to be deployed, but we have not merged them into the inaf 7 release, because, for example, they appeared slightly too late, but there is a series of different features that we are basically have ready programmed because the developers were uh, kind enough to, to work on them. Uh, this is why in the next most probably three months, that means spring, I would most probably around March 2024, we will release INAF 7.1. And INAF 7.1 will just bring a few Kind of interesting features into the, into the table, uh, but what's important, INAF 7 will not break compatibility in any way with the INAF 7.1. INAF 7.1 will not break in any way the compatibility with the INAF 7. That means you will be just able to upgrade from INAF 7 to 7.1 without having to tune everything, because this will be just a set of additional features. Kind of interesting features. Uh, if you want to know, there is already the 
milestone on the GitHub, so you can see what's planned for the INAF7, and this will happen on the spring 2024. However, we are already working, uh, at least, okay, we started working on the INAF8, and INAF8 will change a few things, uh, because every major release, uh, this is expected that we will break the compatibility between uh, different versions of INAF. And what for 100% will happen in the INAF 8 is that INAF 8 will not be released for the F411 flight controllers. Done. F411s are done. The, it's not really a problem with the flash, uh, because the flash on the F411s and F722s is basically the same. And we are currently able to have everything uh, fit on both F722s and F411s, but F411s uh, have A, are slow, uh, so it's a problem to run all the procedures on the F411s and still be able to fly in the in the nice way and have a relatively stable loop time. But second of all, F411s uh, have only two hardware serial ports. And with how everything progresses and what is expected from the modern flight controllers, two serial ports are just not enough. Because uh, if you connect serial RX and then you connect GPS, you have no way of connecting the digital FPV. So that's that. This is why INAF 7 and 7.1 are the last uh, INAF releases available uh, for the F411 flight controllers. Uh, with INAF 8, it no longer will be happening. Nothing changes yet in INAF 7 for the F722s. However, our recommendation is uh, my recommendation, our recommendation do not buy F722 flight controllers uh, because they are limited in terms of the flash memory. And there is a problem even right now to feed all the required functions on the F722s. So just don't go with uh, L405s. Uh, or F745s, or F645s, or H7s, because H7s are so powerful, they will like, have everything for years. So, so that's that. Besides that, what else will go into the INAF8? No idea. We have at least half a year to figure something interesting that might go there. I know... Mm, but I cannot say what. I know that there are at least two so bloody amazing features that one of the companies uh, built based on INAF. They have their own build on INAF and uh, if they will uh, finally release it, they will have to make it public. So there's a pretty good chance those changes will be publicly available. But those features are so bloody amazing. Man! I cannot. I saw. I saw videos. I saw videos of those two things, and they are, by the way, for the mostly for the fixed wing pilots. Amazing! Like that's so cool. You have no idea. But I will not tell you what is it because this is this is still a secret. Uh, I have no timeline. I have no confirmation that this will be released. But if this will be released and to merge to INAV, our the pilot has no chance. This is much better, much more advanced than anything that Ardu Pilot offers. That would be amazing. Uh, Micrath and FPV, is there geofence for INAF? Well, actually, yes. Uh, you might have uh, missed that I even have the uh, video about the geofence. If we go to my channel and go to the videos, uh, there should be girlfriends for, ev for everyone. Uh, see, there's the, there's, the, there's the video. So let me share, let me copy, let me paste. There is a girlfriends. You have to do some magic with a uh, programming framework, but there's a girlfriends. You can have uh, your drone return to you when it flies too far. And uh, and that's that. So you should be happy. So what do you think? What do you think about INAF 7.1 uh, or INAF 8? Okay, maybe let's let me ask another question. Will you miss the F411 flight controllers? I can even like end 
the existing uh, poll and let me start a new poll will you miss f411 flight controllers let's find out what the community thinks uh, then migration fpv no there is not like like you just click and you have it enabled at least not yet maybe in the future but I cannot talk about. This is something I honestly cannot yet talk about. Uh, so that's that. Mm. Uh, Mike and Nicole Drummond, what ground control do you recommend to go with INAV? Um, most probably NWP tools. Uh, there is an open source tool called the MWP, MWP tools. Uh, this is, by the way, uh, made by one of the INAV developers, Stronach, aka Jonathan. And this is the mission planner for the rest of us. Uh, made especially to work uh, great with uh, with the INAV. There are some issues, maybe, okay, running this thing on the Windows is not the easiest things ever. Uh, let's say there can be problems or at least challenges mm, because you need uh, Windows 11 with WSL. Uh, but if you can go with uh, Linux, this thing will get you covered. This thing will run uh, perfectly. It's fully open source. It has shitload, at least it has shitload of different functions. And uh, it's just an amazing, amazing piece of the software. Um, as long as you can run it, because you have to like make some typing here and there, because it's not just installing it runs. But NWP tools, uh, definitely. Alessandro, uh, F411 is dead. Slow and without any chance uh, to attach the necessary external devices. Exactly. And uh, we, me, us, uh, in INAV, some time ago we made a decision that it doesn't really make sense to be backwards compatible at all costs. It's just not worth it. Uh, because at the end you suffer a lot, like we suffered for so long with the F1s and Nazi. We were trying for so long to keep them alive because people are still using this, that it took so much effort that it was like, wow. Uh, then kind of similar situation was with the, all the F3s. We clanked so long for, shorter than with the F1s, uh, for the F3s that one more time, so many issues uh, with trying to fit everything on them that one more time this was super irritating. Uh, so, so that's just that. And uh, this time, even before uh, this will be an issue, just stop. Luckily, uh, luckily, after 411s, uh, we should be good for at least a few years. Mm, even assuming that the we're going to get uh, at least a few interesting updates uh, for the whole INAF and the navigation framework, because we might, we might, we might, and this will be super cool. But I cannot tell you what it is, but it's super cool. Um, then maybe F722s. Uh, but even with the F722s, uh, there's still there's still some space and they are still, let's say, fast enough. So this is not uh, so time pressing. But do not buy new F722 flight controllers for INAF. F405. Go with F405. Uh, nobody uses uh, SBUS anymore. So it's fine. Just, just go with that. And you will be... Uh, you will be happy. Uh, yes, FPV, that's only issue. We need a microplane FC. Pavel, please tell this to manufacturers. Okay, yes, FPV. What would you like to have on this uh, flight controllers for the microplanes? And uh, don't we have something right now? Hmm. There is this series of the uh, Matek uh, F411s. Yeah, but also we have this uh, F405 uh, TE, which is also kind of relatively small. Maybe. <laughs> you know what? I will talk next week with some of the manufacturers. I will, I will talk with them about uh, a flight controller designed for the small aeroplanes. Maybe... 
maybe something will happen. Like for example, Holy Bro. Holy Bro this year released their H7 for the wings, but this is H7 wing. Big, heavy, full of features, but uh, big and heavy and expensive. And if we really can have like something based on the F405 with the small power distribution board and like four servo outputs, one motor. Okay. Even then, even maybe we can, but do we have, do we want to have the analog uh, OSD or not? I'm honestly, I'm, I'm wonder, is there still a need for the analog OSD in the freshly developed flight controllers for the 2024? How do you think? How do you think? Should we even have the analog OSD? I, for example, migrated absolutely almost fully, fully, basically fully to the digital. I don't have anything analog, uh, but I wonder how, how different, uh, how it looks for the different pilots. Uh, so, so maybe something drop, drop your uh, thoughts uh, into, into the comment. Yes, FPV, F405, three awards, amp sensor. Yeah. Three words. That's that's what we need for the micro. Like I said, we definitely need. Uh, yes, for the little wings. Hee. <laughs> Don't abandon the analog, please. I abandoned the analog. <laughs> I abandoned the analog. Uh, no, I have one, two. I have, I still have two builds. Uh, no, I have three builds with uh, with analog. But that's a completely uh, different story. And analog is that well. To some extent, yeah, it is. Yeah, to some extent, it absolutely, absolutely is. Speaking about, speaking about the FPV and analog versus uh, digital, let's talk for a minute about the walk snail, Cadix walk snail uh, versus DJI. You know what? After they, after Cadix showed uh, some new fancy stuff, uh, they have this uh, two antenna VTX. They have the new goggles. I made a video about the new goggles over here. I really start to wonder which uh, digital FPV system at the moment is really the best. Mm. When. When last year, 2020, 2022, uh, Walksnail presented us with the uh, with the Walksnail, and then when I got my hands on the on the goggles and the VTXs, I decided that well, it's kind of good, it's kind of nice, uh, but uh, if I would, uh, let's say, have to choose which one is the best for the for, for me, I still would have to go with the DJI uh, because mostly I already had quite a lot of uh, hardware connected with that. DJI just always works. The, the, the penetration, the range, okay, the penetration is, is kind of nicer. The set of features is, is kind of okay. O3, because I tested it basically in the same time period when I got the O3 Air unit. Um, the image from the O3 is better. On the other hand, the Walksnail has the better image qual quality than the standard Air units and the Vista. So this like, uh, I'm really, I was really not that much sure which one is is better. Uh, even back then, uh, probably if uh, probably if I would be starting on my adventure with the and digital FPV and FPV in general, probably I would say that uh, Walksnail is better. But now, now after they have those goggles uh, and uh, uh, let me let me quickly open this thing. After they have those goggles, and uh, I, I already said it in my review of the goggles. Man, I should not be so happy by the fact that you can put the goggles into the protective box without removing the antennas. It's such an amazing thing. Like, like, come on, it's amazing. With those goggles, um, they are still absolutely not perfect. They have a few things that could be done better, most probably. But with this thing, I do have to say that Walksnail is better for the community. Walksnail actually is better. I said, like, those are not the perfect goggles. They have issues. Uh, they have issues, let, let, let's not pretend. And even there are some issues with the new VTXs. But by the fact that 
Woxnail is much more open in terms of the of the software, and the OSD is not so much open. And uh, you have, to, at least to some extent, uh, HDMI and analog input. Uh, this is just better. This is just better than than this thing, for example, the DJI goggles too. Not that I will be migrating, uh, because. I will not be migrating due to the fact that I have just too much hardware uh, already connected to the DJI system. And I don't want to spend that kind of the money on the new VTXs, mainly because I'm building a house and this is, oh, oh, this is expensive stuff. But Oxnell definitely is much closer to the community, to us pilots, than the DJI ever was and ever will. So that kind of changes uh, one aspect of that. Plus, uh, this is old. This is old news. I know, but uh, have you heard about that? Uh, DJI is kind of fighting with the walk snail, uh, and uh, is kind of forcing the manufacturers of the Biden Biden fly drones not to sell versions with the walk snail. Uh, I mean, they cannot, of course, prohibit anyone from uh, from doing that because that would be <laughs> against the free market, and if the regulators would find out, they would be very unhappy. Uh, but uh, there's this thing as the discount, discount, and uh, discount can be given to anyone, and the rules for the discount can be whatever you want, at least for the one, and. Like if you don't want one of the manufacturers of the bind and fly drones not to sell version with walk snail, say that um, okay, we will give you five percent discount on our hardware if you if our hardware will be the only hardware that you sell your drones with. Who will not say no to such a deal? Because with the margins you have on all of that, if you can get additional 5% or 10% or whatever, however the percent we're going to have, uh, then uh, keeping the same price on your hardware, you are you're gaining money. So, so that's that. And apparently this is what the DJI is doing with the walk snail. Uh, I wonder how this thing going to end up and how how the market gonna react and uh, also there's a question will we gonna have this next next generation of the dji goggles mm, that are, were kind of hinted for the last two months i think and how this thing will turn up which is kind of early mainly because usually dji showed new generations somehow every 18 months uh, but that's a completely 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 different story i yeah, so that's that. Uh, Ghost Rider FPV, have your job pay for your DJI stuff like I do lol. Um, yeah, well, my my channel pays for my stuff. On the other hand, by the way, let's be honest. I like DJI products. I very much like DJI products. Like, for example, got me uh, this camera, the DJI Pocket 3. I think it's amazing stuff amazing pocket camera i will be using this quite a lot for my uh, making uh, videos uh, and uh, i intend to go slightly more into the vlogging by the way not on this channel <laughs> i have like five or six youtube channels <laughs> but that's a completely uh, a completely different story uh, dji uh, osmo action much nicer uh, the microphone from the dji the wireless microphones those uh, probably the best on the market i'm currently using the wireless road microphones but i think i will upgrade on even on my full-blown camera rig to those uh, because they are much smaller nicer and have better better features than the road uh, offers so so that's that gimbals from the dji cameras from the dji i have a mavic it's fantastic no i have a dji mini not the mavic it's fantastic stuff <laughs> but with the goggles well there are let's say problems but that's that so, oh, by the way, uh, I kind of forgot to tell you about this. I have a new channel. <laughs> uh, I have a new channel. The channel is... Uh, I decided to slightly change what's happening uh, on in terms of the type of the content I'm putting on this, this main channel. Mainly because the... 
I was putting too many shorts on the channel and that was kind of breaking uh, some stuff. So I decided that the shorts as the shorts or different kinds of the shorter content will be published on the second channel, uh, which is uh, called the FPV University Clips. For now, I have only like three shorts generated from one of the live streams, and this is fine, uh, but more content will go actually over there. If you have not subscribed to the FPV University Clips, please do subscribe to the FPV University Clips. I would uh, highly appreciate that. I have also this, I already mentioned to a few, few people. I have a channel about the video production. I'm producing so much videos that I can <laughs> I can uh, I can have a channel about that uh, because one more time why not? <laughs> so if you have not subscribed yet to the Pavo makes YouTube, you see this is me, and this is, says that Pavo makes YouTube. Then please subscribe uh, to the Pavo makes YouTube, and not even counting majority of <laughs> shitload of different channels. I still have uh, ah, we will not go down that road. I, let's be honest, majority of those channels are really have no content. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but I have them, and even some of them are monetized. Mm, I can like the income of the ten dollars a month. Uh, not too much, not too much. But this is always uh, always an option. Uh, so um, we have a results of the poll, and this is uh, will the, I asked you will you miss the F four one one flight controllers? And 78% said that, nope, like expected. Like expected, they are not very popular, uh, they are kind of weak, and majority of you will just say, meh, and that's, well, Pavo makes a sandwich, can't wait. <laughs> no, but I made, make, make quite good pasta. And I make quite a tasty sushi. And I can cook quite a tasty turkey <laughs> i am man of many but many talents but that's a completely uh different story alessandro uh, asks a question what do i think about kiss ultra v2 fcs never used kiss in my life i have absolutely no opinion on the topic of the kiss zero absolutely zero opinions on the topic i heard from different people that they are either Amazing or just meh? I don't know. I don't know. I will not, not say anything. I will not drive this conversation in any direction because no idea. No idea. Uh, pasta Masta. I got me, well, actually, my wife got me, got herself, but I'm using this, a nice, uh, nice uh, pot. Mm. Yeah, the pot to, to making. I have when I'm making pasta. I'm even taking my gas oven, portable gas oven, uh, and sure, like good stuff. Uh, but this is a completely uh, my addition. Thank you, thank you for subscribing to my additional feeds. Not that well. Uh, there's much of the use of the subscribers, but with the current YouTube subscribers are useless. But still, please do subscribe. <laughs> but that's a completely different story. Okay. Another topic I wanted to cover is the upcoming release of the beta flight. Mm, let me quickly check something uh, because I have covered something. Okay, so the wait is almost over. Beta flight 4.5 is almost with us. No, that, that haven't sounded uh, very nice. Um, one more time from the top. Wait, it's over. Beta flight 4.5 is almost here. That's a nicer opening line. Uh, before that, the question and the very thank you very much for your super kind donation for five bucks from Steve E. Has Neutron RC submitted their AO boards for INAF targets? Seems like good build quality. I would like to say yes, but I don't remember. I don't remember uh, because Neutron RC submits hardware from time to time, but we are not the ones that are uh, building the targets. Uh, so I don't really remember everything that's happening. I don't remember Neutron RC uh, 
AEOs. But mm, I might check. I know someone who talks to them. So let me quickly check. Neutron RC. What do we have from the Neutron, Neutron RC? So um, no, we have. We have Neutron RC F435, uh, Neutron RC F435 SE, F435 Wing. So we're gonna have in total four different Neutron RC boards. I'm not sure if they are those uh, all in ones, but could be. We have we have some Neutron RCs uh, supported. Uh, but anyhow, let's go back to the let's go back to the to the topic of the let's go back to the topic of beta flight 4.5 when it might happen and what will the beta flight 4.5 not 4.4 like we have right now will bring to the table the answer is that relatively soon the release candidate uh, for the beta flight 4.1 might appear on the might appear public in the next uh, few weeks maybe month maybe later it really depends on the on the current phase of the testing and ensuring by the beta flight team if everything works correctly or not and uh, what will change in case of the beta flight 4.5 comparing to the beta flight 4.4 a lot, but don't really expect any super ground changing uh, changes, like for example, previously we had in form of, for example, the simplified tuning or the uh, but simplified slider tuning or uh, the new GPS rescue or even, I don't know, RPM filtering. Most probably the Beta Flight 4.5 will be rather one step closer of Beta Flight being ready again, or maybe for the first time, depends on uh, how to take a look at it. Be ready to have the position hold and real return to home. Yes, uh, how much, how much. Yes, however strange it might sound, looks like the plan for the Beta Flight team is to close the gap between Beta Flight and the softwares like ArduPilot or INAV, which all have the position hold and thrill return to home and landings functionalities. This is why, in case of the Beta Flight 4.5, there will be some changes in terms of the GPS handling, there will be changes and a lot of improvements in terms of the magnetometer handling. Uh, there will be changes that makes the whole function of the GPS rescue more, more uh, much nicer. And in general, uh, let's let's say it's a preparation to reintroduce ability of the real navigation to beta flight. How long it will take to have real navigation in the beta flight? That's a completely different story. But if you look at the GitHub and what have the beta flight team planned for the beta flight port for po and what have the beta flight team planned for the beta flight and what and what have the beta flight team planned for the beta flight 4.6? For example, the altitude hold might be still might be for example the altitude hold might be a thing again so that's that the full list of the changes uh, planned for the gps for the beta flight 4.5 is like i mentioned the uh, G improved gps handling uh, return to home and gps rescue improvements magnetometer update uh, different usability changes connected with the led strips uh, huge updates to the angle and the horizon mode failsafe simplifications and improvements and uh, something that they called a dimmable RPM harmonics, which is supposed to make the RPM filters much more better than they were previously, plus easy landing. Simplify landing and of course behave slightly better than what Betaflight offers us right now. Looks pretty interesting. Let's see how it all will behave. And this is how you make a video. Ah... <laughs> uh... Okay. Um, 
BOAC Tech, just flash enough 7 to Matag 405 with R9 Slim Plus, but no telemetry. Uh, R9 Slim Fast, but do you use F port? You use uh, S Bus Plus Smart port? Do you use uh, F port 1 or F port 2? In case of the Free Sky, there's so much things that has to be set up correctly, but I know, because I was using the FreeSky stuff uh, some time ago, the F-Port uh, telemetry and SmartPort telemetry all works. Of course, assuming that you uh, have to have it. Oh, Crossfire with Express LRS. Uh, remember that the Slim Plus, one of the pins, uh, I think the TX pin, uh, the X pin is by default uh, inverted, and there, I think there are two uh, pins, one inverted, one not inverted. So you really have to be careful on which pin uh, on the Slim Plus you are using, uh, because you need uninverted uh, on both, if you want to connect yourself to the F405s. Uh, th this was always a mess in games of the FreeSky hardware and in general... Um, <sighs> in general... Free Sky and their protocols, oh, they suck. It works. It works with Betaflight via serial interface, uh, but it works with INA as, as well, man. Uh, if you configure everything correctly, it works uh, also, also just fine. Uh, you only have to select the correct protocol. You're not the only one that is using uh, Free Sky uh, hardware with INA, and it's just working. We can like let me find a cable. Okay, I have the cable, so let me quickly start INAV configurator and... Let's, let's connect to something and let me show you something. And then I will show you what I built, because I like it. So, um, if we go to the receiver tab, and of course, if you connected everything to the correct serial port, uh, crossfire with LRS. If you set the crossfire and you leave this on off and this on auto, it should work. Like this quad over here is the uh, Express LRS, works perfectly. But this is Express LRS without any inverted, non inverted crop. If you are not sure what's really going on, you might try to play with off-on uh, configuration, and uh, that's that. Uh, but it should be working. I know it should be working, because it's working. So, will work, at least should work. But anyhow, mm, let me show you what I built. Logo, enough logo, enough cap, and look at this. In return to home we trust. Amazing stuff. And you can buy it if you want. The link is somewhere on the, over there. So what I built, I built something like this. Mm, it's based on the, It's based on the frame uh, that the Rotor Simon, uh, one of the viewers of this channel, designed uh, some time ago. But uh, previously, I never really had time to finish uh, this thing. And now I finally had time to finish this thing. It's the three incher. It's a three incher with, and the frame frame is very interesting because the frame is only two pieces, and they are two identical pieces. The uh, front, the bottom section, is also the front arms, but then you flip it uh, 180 degrees, put it in the back. Uh, rear motors are inverted, and you have something like that. Uh, so uh, this is literally only two pieces of carbon, plus some 3D printed parts, plus some aluminium standoff uh, standoffs, and a lot of. Uh, and a lot of uh, focus. 
Why don't you focus? And a lot of uh, screws. Mm, motors. Motors are slightly underpowered uh, because the motors I used on this build previously were running on the four inches, four inch propellers, but now it's only three inch propellers. So, so this thing is underpowered. It barely hovers on half of the throttle, but it hovers. It's not, it's not supposed to be fast. Uh, it's supposed to be fly for long. It has a GPS, so full uh, navigation capabilities. And also, if you look carefully, it has the leader. It has the leader and it has the upflow sensor, so it will be able to navigate indoors. Mm, I have not tested this thing yet because, uh, like, the, the family is constantly home, and <laughs> if I will try to fly, they will like, oh, power, don't fly because it's so loud. You will break something. Yeah, I will, but that's a different story. And I like what I did. It looks ugly, uh, especially this this mast. It looks like a like a special case of uh, of something that the crazy designer built. But still, it's the mast. It's indestructible. It's all trimmed, printed with the TPU, so not a chance this thing will get uh, destroyed during the crash. Uh, GPS worked perfectly, and there were absolutely no problems. And even there, there's enough space, so I was able to put the DJI, actually the Cadix Vista uh, camera and the VTX uh, in the back with the antenna uh, sound mounted. And if you put this somewhere over here, it's ugly. It's ugly, but I love it. <laughs> Uh, so in the in the future you might expect some materials about this quad especially on the topic of the uh, how to configure upflow and how to uh, how to everything uh, Brandon Beans looks uh, very form follows function yes exactly uh, first it was the function and then to adopt so that well kind of works what it has to do um, it's ugly. <laughs> I do admit that this thing, no, this this quad uh, was not that ugly before I added this thing. Over then, it was just a characteristic, let's say, with the flipped motors and everything. But after adding this thing and elevating this thing far enough uh, so that it's not interacting with the battery, it's ugly. <laughs> and form uh, absolutely follow functions. Uh, so that's that. Uh, it's ugly. I, I I I build ugly stuff very often, but usually the the form is not really my major concern on the on the topic. So that's that. Uh, uh, no, I will not. She, she's downstairs. She will she will hear that. Anyhow. Um, uh yeah by the way slash uh, slash seven. Uh, this leader previously was in my uh, Pirx seven. <laughs> But I retired Pick 7 uh, for reasons, different reasons. Anyhow, mm, Vern Kelk, mm, Paweł, I have an issue with INAV7 Mamba F405. Uh, won't save present on first connect and I lose M1, M3 or M2, M4, no PWM detected. Uh, do you have the latest uh, INAV configurator? Uh, have you downloaded the latest INAV configurator? Because uh, before the latest, there was indeed a problem with that, connected with that. It was not serving, saving the the the, the preset correctly. Uh, still, you still can have changed the assignment um, on the on the outputs, uh, but without having the hardware, because I don't have this flight controller, unfortunately, on me. My boxes of flight controller do not have any Mamba F405 V2, uh, but that's a completely uh, different story. BOAC Tech, what is the D-Shot Beeper? Uh, D-Shot Beeper is the beeper that just is emulated by the ESCs and uh, motors. Uh, this is not possible with the PWM or, for example, one-shot or multi-shot protocols, but with the uh, the ESC uh, can just make the sound with the motors. It just makes beep, the standard beep that ESC makes uh, during power up. Uh, it's possible to trigger the same beeping uh, via the digital protocol. Uh, so if you don't really like have the standard beeper connected and you would like to have some kind of the audible confirmation of different things, so you enable the digital beeper and the motors will beep whenever the beeper would be beeping in this uh, case. Uh, Paulo Uchoa, uh, we never talk about ERC Trump and Smart Audio, how to use it with INAV. We never talk about this because this is so 2020 topic. Um, 
let's be honest, analog is basically dead. How to use it with iNav? Just connect to the serial port. Uh, select serial port on the port stop in iNav and you have the smart audio. Since this moment you have the ability to change the power in the channel and the bed on your uh, transmitter either from the radio or from the configurator or with the stick, com not the stick commands or from the CMS menu. Just like that. Um, there are so many tutorials about smart audio and Trump protocol that really like shooting new new videos about the topic kind of makes no sense. And how to how to connect this? I'm pretty sure there are tutorials on the internet. If in doubt, uh, you can always check the tutorial on the beta flight because it's basically exactly the same. We can like I will connect this 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 ugly thing uh, so I can show you something. Basically, to have the smart audio or the Trump, just go to the port stop on the serial port used for the function select either TBS smart audio or ERC Trump and you're done. And then over here in the configuration tab, we will not have it because I do not have this thing configured. There will be a section when you can cho choose the power, you can choose the band and you can choose the channel on the on the VTX. Of course, if you connected everything correctly and the VTX was correctly detected by the software, but that's that. There is nothing uh, nothing else basically to add to the to the whole problem. Ah, and that was that. So we have this thing covered. Oh, one hour passed. Oh. Let's talk about the ESC firmware. As we all know, there are two no, scratch that. Let's talk about the ESC firmware. As we all know, there is one ESC firmware that everyone uses, and this is the BL Heli. Okay, there is a BL Heli, BL Heli S, and BL Heli 32, but currently it's only BL Heli 32 and BL Heli S. And they are the only firmwares for the ESCs that we use, right? Well, no, because of course not. This is the free world. We have alternatives. And uh, the only alternative to the BL Heli is the AM32, right? Well, one more time, not, because there is one more. Uh, the, there is one more open source ESC project that is currently on the market. The project is Escape called the project is called Escape 32. I, earlier this year I already spoke about this uh, a little and it's the attempt to make both the BL Heli and AM32 an open so one more time one more open source competition with some interesting features. If we will go to here and let me quickly... Whoa, what have I clicked here? Something is broken. Uh, because that's the... Okay, if we will go here and escape... Escape 32. If you will type... As if you will type Escape32 into the Google, you will be directed to the GitHub Escape32 repository, which is the repository for the, of course, uh, Escape32 flight... Con uh, yes, <sighs> which is the repository for the Escape32 ESC firmware for the ESCs. What does it offer? Well, quite a lot. Mm, it's the at least the competition for the AM32 with some of the interesting uh, interesting features. Uh, but we will not be talking about the features that are, well, quite obvious. Mm, we will rather be talking about something that was shown to me today on how the guy behind the ESC32 thinks about the how the configuration of the ESC can look like. Mm, yes, I do agree that in case of the like Okta having this function might not be the best idea ever. Even in case of the Quad, it can be problematic. But for example, the guy designed and built uh, the ESC with the Wi-Fi. 
What happens? You just power your ESC. Uh, ESC has the Wi-Fi. You connect with your smartphone to your Wi-Fi and you have the full access to everything that the ESC offers. Everything that you can uh, have over there can be changed. So uh, I will show, I will post the link to the video over here. So everyone who's uh, interested in this. Uh, Blue Jay and Quicksilver. Blue Jay is uh, BL Heli and the Quicksilver silver is partially bio heavy but that's a completely uh, different uh, different story but yeah nobody talks about that but this is the competition for the full blown bl heli 32 because it's also 32 bit uh, so there's that a quite a, kind of interesting uh, approach to the problem that uh, maybe not many people have, but it's a nice thing that uh, people uh, are actually thinking slightly out of the box on the topics of the ESCs. Sure, if you just want the ESC and uh, connect this and configure and never touch it, this might be slightly overkill. But actually, why not? Why not going uh, this way around and having something uh, something different? Um, there are people on the internet uh, who say that the Escape 32 flies better than the AM32. And there are people who say that their quads started to fly much better since they upgraded. Mm, okay, I have not compared this, so I will not say, but there are people who say so. Uh, what's interesting, the um, Escape 32 is compatible with quite a lot of the ESCs on the market, uh, especially it's flashable with uh, all the ESCs. Uh, that already are running AM32. So if you would like to ever uh, try yourself of what this flight controller, not flight controller, I always say flight controller. So if you would like to check for yourself what this ESC firmware offers, it's possible to just do it at home. You do not have to buy the ready hardware. Maybe you will be super happy. Maybe not, but well, you have to find out by yourself. The just the fact that we have the competition and just the fact that people are working on this, those kind of things, it's a good sign for the market. Uh, because the fact that we have a competition is the motivation for different people to try harder. If you have the best product of the market, but someone shows up and shows something that is uh, even slightly better, then you have the motivation to improve on your uh, product uh, to still be able to be called the best. So AM32, uh, huge uh, kudos uh, for the guy for uh, trying to to build this thing and trying to popular popularize this thing. Uh, and I know that trying to popularize the Escape 32 is a hard job because uh, for unknown reason, nobody wants to talk with the guy, too bad, because people should be talking with the guy. And also for completely unknown reason, I'm basically the only mainstream, I'm a mainstream YouTuber, by the way, <laughs> I'm the, the only mainstream YouTuber who is ever talking about the AM32. Too bad. Definitely uh, the guy should be, well, let's say, at least appreciated for, for what he's doing. Um, because if not guys like that, uh, we would not have, for example, better flight. We will not have uh, enough. We will not have uh, many, 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 many different amazing pieces of software and hardware that we have right now. And the DJI FPV would be the only option we have. But we don't. So that's good. So, what do you think about things like that? Does it even make, does it even make sense to, uh, to try to create a new ESC firmware? Mm, let, let, let me ask my community. I have my community. I have you guys. Uh, so let's see what you will tell us about the topic. Does it make sense to try to put a new ESC firmware on the market? Let's see what the community will say. So ESC with the Wi-Fi. On the other hand, if we take, 
On the other hand, I'm not sure if you notice that current ESCs are, well, kind of boring. Because what modern ESCs are doing, they are not really that much of the experimenting with the new stuff. Uh, you have the ESC that, yeah, sure, are 32 bits uh, controllers with fast uh, MOSFETs and the current sensing and the voltage sensing and maybe something like that. Uh, all around D shot and uh, can fall back to the different protocols. But if you take a look at the hardware, there's nothing really that fancy about that. Uh, some few years ago, we kind of settled on what the ESC for the RC and FPV should have, and we are not really going uh, out of that idea of what the ESC should have at all. Uh, but this is not, 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 this not always was the reality. If you go back in time to 2015, 2016, you might, for example, find an examples of the ESCs that were not connected with the PWM, that were not connected via the D-Shot, which by the way is a serial, a serial protocol. But for example, we had ESCs that were connected via I2C. Yes, it was fully possible to get yourself uh, four ESCs. Uh, each was connected via the I2C bus. Uh, each ESC had a different address on the bus. Uh, so they could be four ESCs connected to a single I2C bus, just like the barometer or the, or the magnetometer. Uh, you install them and ESC was able to talk independently with one in each of those uh, ESCs and it was flyable. Uh, of course, it had a lot of problems because because first you had to ensure that each one of the ESCs uh, you connected had a different address, a different I2C address of the device, and then there were problems with identification, which was in which one, setting up the order. This was all very complicated, but it was possible. Some time ago, I saw some examples of, for example, the ESCs connected via SPI bus, which kind of also makes sense because SPI is so fast. Uh, it's fully possible for the SPI bus to have four devices or even more devices connected to the one SPI bus and then only by the device select line you select which one of the ESC the flight controller is talking to right now uh, so you have the reliability of the SPI you have the super high speed of the SPI, bidirectional communication out of the box. You do not have to fight with those uh, pesky D-shot protocols and the DMA conflicts because you just connect to one of the SPI buses on your flight controller and uh, everything works out the box. Uh, but one more time, it turned out that, well, maybe this is not the best idea because uh, it's not really simpler. You have to have more cables going to the ESC because SPI bus is too uh, misomosy plus the S select line for the ESC, so plus ground and you have like four wires going to one ESC. Not really the best uh, best idea ever. Uh, then uh, there were also ESC that you just were connecting for the to the serial port. Honestly, just serial port, connect to the flight controller and everything works uh, perfectly. <laughs> One more time, makes sense, unless you want to have four ESCs or more, but then you have at least four serial ports on your flight controllers. And when we go back to the time of the F1s or F3s, um, then each serial port was so important that sacrificing one, not even saying about four, was basically impossible, so this idea died as well. Then we have a few years ago, we had an attempt to make the independent uh, ESC by Matek. I even should have some of the videos when I showed how this thing works. Uh, one more time, a ser serial serial protocol, uh, but one protocol and one serial port covers all four ESCs at once. Uh, you just Connect once you sacrifice one serial port, connect to the four in one ESC, and uh, communication with the four serial ports happens uh, on one serial port. Kind of interesting. Uh, there were proto there were prototypes. I even have I still have somewhere the prototypes for this uh, for this ESC. I never really went uh, far from the prototype version because of some of the issues and most probably uh, price and usability was was kind of the on the concern. But it was an idea on how to make the ESC better. But after we made the ESC better and we reached the current form of the ESC, the evolution has stopped. What was the 
last big change in topics of the ESCs. When the last time the ESC we use in the, for example, for our FPV drones changed? I think that the last time the ESC changed was when we put four independent ESCs on one PDB. We created four in ones. After that, there were no changes at all. Too bad, because to think about this, I honestly don't think that the current generation of the ESCs is are really the best ESCs we can have. I'm pretty sure we can have better. But how much better? I don't know yet. So that's that. And oh, 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 I completely forgot to show you something. Um, I got some interesting hardware. Mm, I got the hardware like two weeks ago. I was supposed to make some videos uh, about this, but uh, first I was feeling sick, then I had something else to do. So, well, yeah, I didn't. So the, the topic is still open. Uh, the topic is still open, but I will definitely try to record something about uh, the new hardware next week, because it's pretty cool. Um, let me let me quickly prepare the top camera. Uh, focus. Focus, you bitch. Focus. Okay. The top camera have focused. Nice. Ah. Radio Master. Radio Master is on it again. Da da! Radio Master has a new series of the Express LRS compatible receivers. They are called and transmitters because this is the whole package. They are called the Bandit. You see, Bandit like uh, Outlaw and 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 stuff. And if you remember the last year's 2022 Ranger series, they are the same on the outside, uh, powered by the. Uh, Express LRS, but instead of being uh, 2.4 gigahertz like the Ranger series, the whole Bandit series of the transmitter and receivers are da -dum -da -dum, 900 megahertz Express LRS compatible radios. This is the full size uh, Bandit. Uh, I like the aluminium, by the way, on this thing, uh, with a lot of ports, but we will not be covering that, it doesn't make sense. And you can connect this thing to this big and chunky 900 megahertz uh, antenna. And if you were ever thinking that, well, I'm not migrating from the R9 or the Crossfire because I need the extra penetration of the 900 megahertz and uh, Express LRS does not really offer me that. Well, this thing has. Mm. <laughs> With this thing, there is not a single reason to pretend that uh, Express LRS does not have uh, competition to the Crossfire, because it has. Uh, there is this full-size Ranger. By the way, there will be a full-blown video about the full-size Ranger. There's a full-size Ranger. There are... not my Ranger, sorry, Bandit. Uh, there is the Nano and Micro. I don't remember, I don't know. This is Nano, so let's open the Micro. If we open the micro, this will look basically from the outside just like the re Ranger looked like. Yeah. Unboxing. We do unboxings over here, because people love unboxings. Okay. This thing, for example, standard micro version that puts nicely in the JR bay, uh, even with the OLED. Uh, the Ranger have no OLEDs on the on the micro. The the Bandit has the has the OLED, so you can have all the configuration done via this thing. This is plastic, but this kind of looks like a partially metallic because this is the radiator for the 900 megahertz uh, elements. The nano version looks very similar, but we will not go into the details over here. Uh, and I saw somewhere that uh, this thing goes for more than 100 kilometers. 
that's far that's bloody far and of course there is always a series of the receivers uh, that are compatible with 100 megahertz the they are calling them the br3 and br1 one is the diversity the br3 is the diversity the br1 is without the diversity uh, which is also nice so that for the people who really want to go far 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 away maybe to the moon or even uh, slightly further than to the moon the bandit is something to to take a look at there is however one problem connected with the radio master bandit series Although the European version of the Bandit and in general the 900 MHz Express LRS is working on the correct band uh, because in the Europe we use 868 MHz while in the FCC world, so for example United States, this is 915 MHz and the European version of course uses the correct bandwidth. Uh, those transmitters and receivers are not compatible with the regular Relations we have over here in Europe because there is no LBT listen before talk so also it's using the correct bandwidth correct frequencies uh, usage of bandits in European Union is at least problematic uh, I mean you will not uh, go into direct problems of for example being uh, jammed by the 900 megahertz uh, cellular uh, telephony it will not happen because it's a correct 868 megahertz but because there is no uh, LBT procedure and this is in general not compatible with the how the 800 megahertz communication should look in the European Union there is no CE mark for those which means that uh, they are not officially allowed to be used in the European Union. Of course, you can do it uh, and most probably everything will be fine. But in case that you will use them in the European Union and uh, you will... Uh, do something that you should not be doing or for example crash your hardware uh, and you will want to exercise the insurance uh, for example if you have insurance and the insurance company will ask you okay but was your hardware compliant and you will say yes and they will say prove it and they will prove that this is not compliant you might not get the insurance plus of course uh, officially this is this is you are not allowed to use this uh, in European Union. But Radio Master officially says that they do not take any responsibility. There is no CE uh, certification for this hardware. You use it at your own responsibility. Uh, as long as you will not have any problems, everything will be fine. Of course, if you will have some problems, then not everything always will be fine. But when was the last time somebody got problems from flying this thing? <laughs> And by the way, even majority of the, not just majority, quite a lot of the Express LRS 2.4 gigahertz uh, transmitter and receivers are also not fully compliant. Because you have to have the CE mark on your on your thingy. And also, for example, the Radio Master has the C 2.4 gigahertz Radio Masters have the CE mark. Different, might not. But this is a completely, completely different story. So you have been warned. You want to go to the moon? Ranger have you covered? No, sorry. You want to go to the moon? Bandit have you covered? If you don't want to go to the moon, then still has you covered. Oh. Uh, Lima, quick question. Is there a possible reason why INAV says barometer unavailable on the Marmba Mark IV F722 up? Auto detect or choosing the correct barrel does not work. Most probably the driver for the barrel you are using uh, is not compiled into the version. My advice is to make the issue on the INAV GitHub uh, repository uh, by stating uh, which flight controller exactly you have, which target is used by this, uh, by this, by this hardware and which barometer is installed on your uh, on your board so we can verify if the 
uh, driver is enabled and everything is configured. But we have to know exactly which target you are using, which hardware you are using, and which exactly model of the barometer is put on your board. And then maybe in the next uh, release we will uh, we will fix it, hopefully. Mm -hmm. I saw something interesting. I wanted to check something. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I was wrong. I was wrong. Nothing really, really interesting. Oh, Captain Bry. Uh, Captain Brian. Hello, man. Nice to see you around. Yeah, connect them over NFC wireless. Yeah! NFC connected uh, Wi-Fi. <laughs> yes, sis. That would be something. No, don't get me wrong. On the on the topic of the Escape 32 and the Wi-Fi on the on the ESC. I know, I know that I know on the longer run most probably it doesn't really have much sense. I agree that it's it's on the quad or the octa it makes absolutely no sense. But if you have um RC car and uh, then there are slightly more settings you might be willing to change on your RC car especially when you are going into the competition like uh, changing torques and, and all those fancy things you have over there. Maybe then on the airplane before a flight uh, you want to have uh, high torque, low torque. Okay, on the quad, probably not. But I do see potential possibilities and in the, in the, in the usages. Will this be the next thing to have Wi-Fi on every single of those uh, ESCs? Most probably not. But at least the guy is trying. And this is extremely important that people try to do something new do something med better than uh, previously because if not then we are not evolving we are not moving forward we are going backwards because if you stand still you're going backwards because the whole world goes forward so this is why i i we should we will we would not have a lot of amazing things if people would just uh, accept that the current state is is the best state we can have and one more time i don't believe that the current uh, idea of what the esc should be is the best one because it isn't i honestly say that from the technological point of view the setup we are using right now for the four in one escs is just stupid it's stupid maybe let me record this right like this from the technological point of view, the current setup we have on the 4-in-1 ESCs is just stupid. 4-in-1 ESCs is not the ESC that allows you to connect to four motors. No, those are just four separate ESCs put on the one board connected via four separate wires, for signal wires, for independent interfaces to the flight controller. You have one flight controller that generates four signals for four different ESC sends them over four separate wires to four separate completely independent ESC on the four in one. And I ask why? Wouldn't it be just much so much more convenient and better from every basically aspect if instead of generating four independent signals and send them over four independent wire, this thing was connected just via one single either serial port or SPI protocol or whatever else. That would be, well, cleaner, better, probably even cheaper, because you would have only one MCU on those uh, ESCs, with, of course, the, the, the power switching section would be, have to, we would have to have the four power switching sections. But who says that we need the four separate MCUs, the computers, microcontrollers, on each of those uh, small ESCs on the four-in-one working independently? One single bigger uh, multi-controller can do it as well. That would be connected over the one interface, not for a separate one. But we have this setup because back then it was just cheaper, much more convenient to just slap this thing together and pretend it's the best option forever. But it's not. And I would love, I honestly would love to see someone break with this assumption that the 4-in-1 ESCs should be four independent ESCs. They should. This should be one ESC that can drive four separate motors. And it, techn 
technology allows it for that. Absolutely. In 2018, 2019, I don't remember exactly the year, Matek already proved that it can happen. They had prototypes. I even had prototypes of the Matek 4-in-1 ESC that was connected via a single serial protocol to the flight controller and all four power switching sections were connected to a single STM32. Those, this was just like single ESC with four power switching uh, circles instead of four separate ESC on the one board. But for different reasons, well, we don't. And I wish this idea comes back. I honestly wish this idea comes back because this is just so much better idea than what we have right now. So that's that. Uh, Flipster FPV, thank you very much for two pounds donation and the question, how good is AT32 support? Everything works. There are no known problems for the AT32. Everything is there, everything is working. Uh, flight controllers are uh, stable, ready to be used, flown together, like whatever you want to... Whatever you want to do over there, just go with that, you will be happy. I even have those uh, iFlight boards somewhere uh, because I, I was the one that made the target for the INA for those boards. Work perfectly fine, no problems at all. Um, Captain Bra, yeah, how much more range does anyone need? Uh, I already can not see the on like 200 uh, milliwatts uh, team 2.4 range. Exactly. <laughs> the range that we are getting on modern even 2.4 radios is more than we ever need. But if you want to have more range, then you have 900 megahertz. <laughs> because, yes. Um, uh, flying without videos, completely different story. Uh, by the way, um, there is. Should we talk about war in the Ukraine? Mm. No, we won't be talking about war in the Ukraine. Uh, but I know that there are some new developments over there, and uh, let's say that the Russian forces learned how to jam 2.4 radios. <laughs> And Ukrainians are trying to find a different, better solution to, to fly their drones over the Ukrainians. But, okay, that's a completely different story. So that's that. Okay. Do we have any other topics for today? Because I don't have any other topics for today. I think uh, that I covered everything I wanted to cover. So that means I will... I think we will be probably... Uh, slowly uh, ending this uh, live stream. Thank you very much uh, for joining me today. It was a pleasure uh, hosting you again after a month of the break. Most probably there will be one more live stream before Christmas. Uh, I still have, still have, yeah, Discord is there. Yes, Discord is available. I know Discord server is there. Uh, the I have some building to do, so uh, most probably we're gonna have one more stream about the building. No idea when yet, either next week or next next week, the one before Christmas. Or maybe we even have some uh, some stuff during the Christmas, uh, between the Christmas and the New Year, because well, I will have some free time, so I will be bored. I will want to do something. And I have quite a lot of interesting ideas. And uh, if I'm streaming when I'm building, I have motivation to, to do so. So maybe maybe something will happen. And uh, okay, so that would be, I think... Uh, uh, okay, we have a question. So because we have a question, then I will answer the question, because why not? Brandon Beans, uh, are there any major manufacturers moving to 8032? Uh, iFlight iFlight has the series of the 8032. Mm. Should I find them? No, I, ha I have I have samples over there. And let, let's be honest, iFlight is the major. Let's call it like that. iFlight is the major retailer, and iFlight is the major brand. I recently got some interesting <laughs> insights of how things are working uh, so uh, iFlight has the 8032 line of the of the flight controllers mm. something is ah because okay ah, sorry so 
iFlight, uh, this is F435. They have iFlight Blitz, F435. This is uh, Avata. Yeah, yeah, this is not the Avata, anyhow. Uh, this is based on the Arturitech 8032 and they have the one in the 20 by 20 millimeters and uh, in uh, 30 by 30 millimeters. So the small, this is the big one, this is the small one. Um, iFlight always had the reputation of the good manufacturer. They are not the manufacturer, they are only a brand, but that's a completely different story. Uh, and uh, so... <laughs> Yeah, well, not the broker. Mm. How to say it? They are not the ones that are designing and manufacturing their hardware. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they are the brand. iFlight is the brand. Let's let's call it like that. They are the brand. But who makes the hardware? It's a completely completely different story. <laughs> But you know, like you get those tiny, tiny pieces of information uh, here and there. Uh, iFlight 8032 stack is cheap. Yeah, it's cheap. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it's more expensive than the SpeedDB F405. You cannot really compete in terms of the price with the SpeedDB recently. You just go there and uh, how much is this? How much is the... This is uh, 41 euros, uh, but... SpeedDB F405 V4 at the same time is how much? 36? Now this is for the stack. So the flight controller is 37 dollars, not euros. So it's even like 20% cheaper. And the whole stack uh, is uh, 70 bucks. You cannot honestly, like iFlight is much more expensive than the SpeedDB. Uh, which one is better? Uh, a completely different story. Uh, this one definitely looks prettier, and th this one has the uh, Bluetooth for the wireless communication. Uh, iFlight uh, doesn't, so <laughs> an argument. How valid and important is the argument? That's a completely different story. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is not H H MCO. This is a different. No, 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 but. It's like, it's like Cadix was manufacturing uh, Cadix Vistas. Yeah, right. <laughs> they were not. <laughs> and just like Cadix is manufacturing Walksnail goggles. Yeah, they are not. And Cadix is the one that designed the Walksnail goggles and the whole radio system. <laughs> no, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, but no, the, um, let's be honest, no majority of the of the companies uh, that that we have like are mostly brands and the company that has owns the brand is doing much so much more things like matek for matek uh, manufacturing flight controllers is only that big of the portion of their business because they are actually a very good very big manufacturer and matek is a manufacturer they are really like manufacturing the scrap uh, they are four years in the uh, power supply uh, business uh, and they are selling their... There's a pretty big chance that if you have the uh, one of the most popular uh, electronic brands at home, you are using hardware that was actually manufactured by Matic. <laughs> and they had, at one point, said, oh, we will, we will make those flight controllers for the... <laughs> them and they they are doing and this is uh, this is this is amazing so so that's that so uh yeah okay mm, we kind of went slightly longer than originally expected so we will be now now we will be really ending this live stream. So one more time, thank you very much for joining me in this evening. Uh, we will meet soon again. I'm going to talk about crop. Maybe we'll build some crop. Maybe we're going to have a session of configuring the upflow on this thing. Who knows? So one more time, thank you very much. And uh, like always, happy flying. Ciao.